Uh, I want to go first straight to Charlie Daggett. He's at the airport where the first attack took place at 8 a.m., uh, carried out by now we know men that were captured on CCTV. He's joining me now live from the airport. Charlie, what's the latest? What can you tell us about these perpetrators? Well, it's, it's a confusing picture this morning. In fact, we thought we had a, a better lock on it. I think Belgian authorities felt they had a better lock on it. But the uh, Belgian prosecutor spoke moments ago, and he has confirmed two suspects have been identified. One of them at the airport, Ibrahim al Bakrawi, thought to have blown himself up at the airport, and his brother Khalid, who detonated his bomb on the subway. But the real question is about Lashrawi, who we have been speaking about. Now, this is the suspected bomb maker who may have been involved in the attacks in Paris, and his whereabouts are unknown. Now, Belgian media reported that he may have been the third suspect in the airport, and that's what we've all been led to believe. We've seen some of the CCTV footage. Belgian prosecutors have asked the public for their help in trying to find him. However, now they say they're not so sure that that is the person who is in there. What they were able to tell us is there was one bomb, there were three bombs at the airport, two of them went off, and there were witnesses who said that they had heard two explosions. But the third bomb that they found there was huge, much larger than the other two bombs combined. And we know that there is a controlled explosion by uh, a bomb disposal unit yesterday afternoon while we were there. Uh, so that may be what took out that larger bomb. But that's about all we know right now. I mean, this is massive manhunt underway for Lashrawi. There are rumors that he may have been arrested earlier. There had been arrests in a neighborhood about 45 minutes outside the airport. But as we know, as just a few minutes ago from the Belgian prosecutor, this man remains on the loose, a suspected bomb maker, obviously very dangerous. Charlie, what's interesting to me, uh, reports in Belgian media seem to indicate that some of these guys were not on the radar for being jihadists. They were, in fact, on the radar for committing crimes, for being thugs, in fact. What are you hearing about that? Yes, well, both of these Bakrawi brothers uh, have been identified as as, as uh, petty thieves, essentially. Gangsters is how they've been identified or, or described. So, yes, not somebody who Belgian authorities had, had had jihadi ties to, but, I mean, they're saying with some confidence, clearly with what's happened here, that they were indeed involved uh, in Islamic extremism. And, you know, Vlad, you've covered these, these uh, stories yourself. Oftentimes, we do find people that have be that had lives of petty criminals, and, and then they get involved in these Islamic extremist network. Uh, some of the Paris attackers have been identified of having those similar pasts, and they come from the same sort of neighborhood. So more and more, we're seeing more of a connection of a criminal network uh, with, that uh, blends into Islamic extremism. That seems to be the case that we're looking at uh, in the recent attacks here in Brussels. Yeah, Charlie. In fact, several counterterrorism experts that we spoke to uh, tragically with the last time we were here back in November said the very same thing that you're saying. Many, many times when they find some of these terror cells, they realize that the young men that are within them are not actually true believers. They are just looking for something to do. And it sounds terrible, but that's really what it is. They feel so disaffected, so disenfranchised from society at large that this is just another gang. This is just another criminal element for them to participate in. Charlie Daggett at the airport here in Brussels. Charlie, thank you very much. We'll check in with you a little bit later.